All right, class, uh, welcome back. Uh, we're on section 4.2, and today we're talking about circumference. And write your name and the date. So um, you may have learned previously that the, the distance around the outside of a circle, if you have a circle like this and we were to walk all the way around the outside, that is called the circumference. And we, um, we say this is basically the same as the perimeter of the circle. So if you think back to when you learned about uh, rectangles and triangles and squares and things like that, um, we talked about the distance around the outside of a square being the perimeter. Uh, in this case, for circles, we call that the circumference. So uh, in class, uh, you had the opportunity to, to measure a few objects and uh, find their diameter and find their circumference and so on. So I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to take a uh, a second here to calculate the um, the circumference divided by the diameter in each case. So uh, for this first one, I measured some tape. So the example would be 17 divided by 5.3, and let's see what we get. Okay, I get. Uh, you notice this number goes on for quite some some. Uh, some digits. So I'm going to round this off to just the second digit right about there. So I'm going to call this 3.2 and I guess I would round this one up because the next digit is a 7. So 3.21. Okay, I'm just going to do the same thing for each of these here. What I want you to notice is that these things are all quite different sizes. The tape, the clock, the, the bottle, uh, the, the, the garbage bin, they're all very different sizes. And yet, when we divide their circumference by their diameter, we're getting kind of close to the same number. So what you should notice is, um, when we divide the circumference by the diameter for any circle, no matter what the size is, um, the answer is roughly 3. Now this um, this kind of amazed early uh, mathematicians because they're they're pretty impressed that no matter how big the circle was, uh, we would get the same ratio when we divided the circumference by the diameter. So, for any circle, the ratio of the circ circumference to the diameter is equal to pi. And uh, we use the symbol that looks kind of like this. It's kind of two lines and a squiggly line on top, and that's just the Greek symbol for pi. So pi is uh, well. It's a very long number, uh, but it's approximately 3.14159 dot 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 dot, and it goes on for a ways. So um, this this number literally goes on forever. So what we say is pi is approximately equal to 3.14, and these little squiggly lines that you see right here, they look like equal signs um, that they're a bit wavy. They just mean approximately, like close enough. And so when we talk about pi, we're always going to use pi uh, being 3.14. So pi is a number that goes on forever. It never repeats and it never terminates, and you can't write it exactly as a fraction. And so a number like that, we call that an irrational number. And there's a few examples of those, but probably the most famous would be pi, and it's the only one that we're going to have to worry about uh, for this year. So uh, the circumference, we can say the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. So the circumference C is equal to pi times the diameter. And remember that pi, this number right here, is always going to be 3.14. So even though we've written it as this funky symbol, you know, actually know what the value of that is no matter what. Okay. Uh, since we know that the, uh, the diameter is equal to twice the radius, if this diameter here is just equal to twice the radius, then we can also write this formula as saying circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. So we've got two ways to calculate the circumference. Okay, let's do a couple of examples. So a toonie, <clears throat> a toonie has a radius of 1.4 centimeters. Uh, find the diameter and the circumference of the toonie. So if I've got a toonie, I'm just going to draw a little picture here. Here's my toonie. And the, uh, the radius is 1.4 centimeters. I need to find the diameter and the, and the circumference. So let's find the diameter first. If you think back to last day, we learned the uh, formula for the diameter. If we know the, uh, the radius, the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. 
in this case is two times 1.4 centimeters, which is equal to, and then th for this, uh, just a reminder that for this chapter, you are allowed to use a calculator. Maybe you can do this calculation in your head. Maybe you need to refer to a calculator. You could always do it long form as well. Two times 1.4 is 2.8. Now it's really important that if you leave this as your final answer, that's not gonna get you full marks. And the reason is because this is an actual physical thing. This toonie has a radius of 1.4 centimeters, which means the diameter has a, is a diameter of 2.8 centimeters. So really important, don't forget your units here in your final answer. We're gonna see that a lot. Okay, um, now we need to find uh, the circumference. And to find the circumference, I'm gonna use this formula right here, which we learned uh, just a moment ago, which says that circumference is equal to two times pi times the radius. So that's like two times 3.14 times the radius, which is 1.4. Now, again, uh, you can do this one longhand if you want, but this is a case where when we're using pi, it's nice to be able to use a calculator, and so feel free to do that. So two times 3.14 times 1.4. We can do this all in one step because it's all just multiplication. And we get an answer of 8.792. And remember that again, we need to have units in our final answer. So centimeters. Don't forget those. Okay, the last example here. So a car tire rolls 2.8 meters in one rotation. So imagine we've got a car tire here and it rolls 2.8 meters in one rotation. So that means it goes from here and it goes all the way along this distance in one rotation. So it ends up kind of over here. Well, the distance traveled by a tire, as we saw in the example in class, the distance traveled by the tire is equal to the circumference. So the circumference of the tire must be 2.8 meters. So if you look at the formula that we saw earlier, it says circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Well, another way of writing this formula, um, and that we're going to talk a bit more about in class, is that the diameter is equal to the circumference divided by pi. And so if we know the circumference uh, is equal to 2.8 meters, then 2.8 divided by 3.14 will give us our diameter. Now you can see here again, I'm getting an answer, it's, it's quite a long answer, it kind of goes on for a while. So I'm going to round this off uh, to somewhere a little bit cleaner. I'm going to round it off to the one, two, three digits right there. So I'm going to call this 0 0.89, and I guess that would round up to 2. 0 0.892, and that's meters. Now we uh, found the diameter, but we still have to find the radius. And you remember from last day, uh, the formula said the radius is equal to the diameter divided by two. So that's 0 0.892 divided by two, which is 0 0.892 divided by two. And I get 0 0.446, 0 0.4. Four, six. And my units for this question, I can always go back and look at uh, the question. The units are meters. All right, that's it for 4.2. Don't forget to do the recap.